Hello, you join me for another bike review, and this time we're looking at the 2019 Honda GL 1800 Goldwing, a bike which has never really appealed to me in the past. They've always been sort of aimed at a target demographic and maybe had a reputation for that, that kind of older rider who just just looks at touring and, and, and little else, whether that be a, a fair reputation or not. But it looks like Honda's gone some way to try and to, to try to broaden the horizon of the bike, and that's, that's very evident with the model you see here. It had a big redesign for 2018, and along the way shared a huge 48 kilos. And I'll go through some of the technical elements of the bike and, and, and how it's changed in a moment. Uh, what I am going to do, I'm setting off tomorrow, I'm going to, I'm going to take it on a road trip, so rather than just ride it around and, and, then, and then give you my views, I'm going to take it on a proper road trip, what it's designed for, I'm going to go down to the Land's End and back, which for me is about, it's about five, six hundred miles, I'm going to do that over the course of about 24 hours, should give a proper flavour for how this bike copes in the, in the type of environment it was designed for. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's look at some of the technical elements. The centrepiece of this bike is undoubtedly the 1833cc flat 6 engine. It produces a little more power than the outgoing motor at around 125 HP, it's about 9 more, and a similar amount of torque at 125 foot per pound. I mentioned before about weight saving, now a fair amount has been saved in the engine about six kilos in fact it's it's more compact it's got a number of internal changes one of those being that it's now got four valves per cylinder instead of two that it had before other areas where weight's been saved are the frame which is now aluminium and it's also got a revised braking system fuel capacity is down from 25 liters down to 21 liters now whereas that might sound um bad for a touring bike initially it does save extra weight and also because the fuel economy of the bike is up on this model you get about the same range so nothing really lost and you save some extra weight so that's good all in all the old bike that this model replaced weighed 413 kilos which is pretty significant and this one like I say 48 kilos lighter is coming in at 365 kilos now if you have the tour model uh, which I mentioned before gives you the uh, the top box at the back and probably acts as a very nice backrest for your pillion passenger that adds 14 kilos to the weight and if you plump for the DCT model which got a seven speed automatic box that adds another few kilos as well the bike comes with four riding modes rain sport uh, tour and economy and I'll put the details for what those individual modes do up on the screen so that you can read them now Perhaps, not surprisingly, for a bike of this size, it also comes with a reverse gear, which is something something of a novelty, but it is actually pretty handy because although it shed a lot of weight, it's still quite a heavy, bulky bike. Aside from its engine, the other area where this bike really stands out is the dashboard. Uh, in the centerpiece here, you've got a 7-inch sat-nav screen, which will also control your Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, radio, you see your speakers down here, uh, cruise control, and so on. In fact, the sat nav screen on this bike is the same size as the one in my car, which I, which I find rather amusing. Okay, so with all the technical details out of the way and all the changes that we've looked at, let's get on the road. Let's do our epic road trip, five, six hundred miles over the course of 24 hours. Hopefully pick up some nice scenery down by the coast and let's see how we get on. First thing I should say is that it's actually quite enjoyable being able to ride down the motorway and still hear the music coming from the stereo. Yes, of course, you could hook up a Bluetooth headset, but it's just nice to have the option to be able to do it naturally coming from the bike. Next thing I should mention is that the, the chassis and the brakes do a wonderful job here. I mean, they've been asked to cope with a third of a ton plus the weight of the rider, and it's actually a, a genuinely pleasant surprise how well they cope with this bike's weight. Okay, so I'm now at Land's End, the most southwesterly point in England. Sun Sunday morning, 6 a.m., should be nice and quiet out. Going to explore some different types of roads on the way back, see how the bike performs. Did 310 miles to get down here yesterday, mostly in the rain, so that was a lovely British summer day. Fantastic. But the bike coped well, admirably well, kept me comfortable, and for the most part, yeah, performed really well in the rain, so that was a bonus. Um, like I say, going to head off now, check out some of the roads in the local area, over the moors, while it's nice and quiet on the Sunday morning. So, I'll catch up with you later.
Okay, so I'm back home now. Done another 320 miles today, added to the 310 yesterday, so 630 miles in roughly 28 hours. So that's a pretty good road test as well. So a good test of my endurance. I've got to admit, the last 70 or 80 miles was a bit of a struggle. My knees and back were beginning to hurt, but 630 miles in just over a day is that's a lot of riding. And the bike coped really well. Uh, it's very comfortable. It does a really good job of hiding its size and weight. I've got, I've got to admit, even in obviously I'm down some narrow, twisty alleyways earlier on, and even manoeuvring the bike is really good. It's really helped out by that reverse gear, as you might expect. So, without further ado, let's let's go over to the bike and have a look at some of the individual components, and uh, let me let me talk you through how I got on with them. The screen's adjustable on the front of this bike, and I've got to admit, I thought it'd be a bit of a gimmick. It's operated by the button on the bar here as you'll see but it's really not a gimmick it's incredibly useful to be able to adjust that screen as you ride it along in varying wind conditions the screen's absolutely fantastic on this you'll see it on lots of the onboard riding shots that i do probably clearer because it's incredibly bright and reflective today uh, but yeah that's, i mean that's fantastic same size sat nav screen as my car which makes it very clear easy to read etc when you're riding along there's loads of quality switch gear on the bike here. These controls will operate the bike when it's stationary and then kind of move on to the controls that you see on the bar. My one complaint is the switch here for high beam, which for some reason I seem to knock quite, occasion, quite occasionally, quite often, uh, knock it onto high beam without noticing and then you just see the, see the light appear on the dashboard, which isn't ideal, I admit. I mean, maybe that's just me. As I rode it more and more frequently, um, I hit it less often. Maybe it's maybe it's got something to do with going for the clutch and knocking it with my finger. I I, I don't know. It could just be me. In terms of the riding modes, you see I've got it set to tour here. There are other four modes which I mentioned before. Those are controlled by the uh, the, the toggle switch on the bar here. Now I tried I tried to play around with these. Uh, I find sport really really sharp and snappy. To be honest, even in heavy rain, I just set it to tour and I left it in tour. It works well. I suppose my one complaint from the front of the bike here would be this this sort of area here. Um, instantly, you get you get a decent amount of storage. So there's a there's a cubby hole here with a USB charger in it, and there's also one on the side here. Okay, which incidentally that's how you release the fuel cup. Um, yeah, my one complaint would be that this is this is all a little bit plasticky, um, which. I don't think it's great when you've paid a lot of money for the bike and it's it's right in front of you facing you all the time. Seat on this thing is absolutely incredible. It's fantastic. Probably the best I've experienced on any motorcycle. Did all those hours in the saddle, probably 14 hours in total across the day and didn't feel uncomfortable with the bum once. And that's all you can really ask for, isn't it? A decent amount of luggage capacity here, probably enough for a couple for a weekend if you pack relatively frugally, but the fact that it's integrated and works as simply as this makes it a lot easier than having uh, separate external panniers. At a touch under £22,500, this is not a cheap motorcycle. It's broadly comparable with its rivals, not that it really has many, but if you look at the BMW K1600 for example, it comes in at more or less the same sort of ballpark in terms of price. You are however getting a lot of bang for your buck, from this bike's engine through to the technology that it houses and the all-round capability, there's a lot going on there. Now if Honda's aim was to broaden the appeal of this bike by slimming it down and making it more usable on a day-to-day -day basis, I would go some ways to say they've they've achieved that aim. I would certainly have no no problems using this bike as a, as a daily rider, which I would never have considered a Goldwing being capable of doing that before. Not just touring, but using to go to the shops and get you commuting to work, etc, etc. So there you have it, a feather in the cap for Honda there. Okay, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. What I'll do now is I'll, pl I'll play you out the few minutes of some of the beautiful scenery that we saw down in Cornwall and some more onboard shots of the bike, just to give you a flavour of what she does. Thank you. Thank you.